Hello everyone, my name is Jer. I have really bad allergies right now, don't mind my voice. I wanna start off by saying, before I get into this, with everything happening in the world right now, especially in the United States, it feels really irresponsible to be, I don't know, grumbling about drag race production drama. But at the same time, I want my channel and every space that I exist in on the internet to be a space that people can sort of distract themselves if they need to and sort of get a respite and a recharge. I wanna make it clear that I stand with bodily autonomy I stand with people's right to choose, and I think that what is happening right now is really disgusting. We've got this, and we're gonna move together, and we're gonna be stronger in the end. We just have to resist and fight and not let the bad guys win. And we know who those people are. Let's talk about RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 7, Episode 8. So this episode is called Santa School for Girls. Now initially when I saw the title of this episode, I thought it was going to be sort of a jinx centric episode because of Detox's comment in season five about how it's not RuPaul's school for girls. On top of the fact that Jinx is the only contestant here who's done a major Christmas special or a holiday special, I thought that maybe they would sort of riff off of that and make it a Jinx centric episode. I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised to see that it wasn't overly produced in that sense that it wasn't just made for Jinx. So Trinity Block Evie last week. Was this a good play? I think it was. I think blocking Jinx again sort of just continues to tunnel vision everybody. And I think the fact that Viv was so tunnel visioned on Jinx and Jinx was so tunnel visioned on Viv, it really distracts them from playing the game. And Bob brought it up the best when you're playing Super Smash Brothers and you aren't just going after one player because they taunted you one time and you don't like that. And you go after them and you target them and you get them out of the game, but then you have one life left and everybody else is still at full lives. So it's a catch-22 of how to play this game. I think choosing someone else who hasn't gotten a block was very smart. And Evie's been on a really steady incline. I personally would have either gone for Jada or for the Vivian, in my personal opinion, because I feel like the Viv has been just doing so well in the judges' eyes. And I feel like at this point, it's pretty clear that they want her in the top. There's only four challenges left, which is kind of insane. So this point in the competition is where the real strategy starts. This is sort of that point in Mario Party when it's revealed that all the coins are changing their values and you only have so much time to get a star. So you have to put the pedal to the metal. And if some of these girls are not strategizing now or up until this point, they're absolutely doing so now. And we saw that with Trinity, making sure that Jinx didn't get the role that she wanted and that it went to Monet. Because she's got her alliance and she's trying to strengthen their chance of getting to the top two, it makes sense. So you're seeing some of these queens passing forward and then some of them doing little humble brags like Jada being like, hey everybody, I've got three stars. I'm probably in the top, so I don't have to really work that hard. And then everyone's like, lasers on them. We're starting to see a lot more crop up in these last couple episodes. And I think we're going to see some queens lose motivation and spark because it's gonna be pretty clear that they're not gonna make it to the top. And honestly, I feel like Shay and Raja are there right now. I feel like the two of them either will take a path of, well, we've got nothing to lose. We're probably not gonna make it. So balls to the walls, be stupid. Or they're just gonna not try as hard, not exhaust themselves as much and just know that after the show, they're gonna have some success. So I think the two of them, I don't wanna say they're on a decline, but I definitely think they're at that point where if I don't win, it's pretty clear that it's not gonna happen. And that's kind of a bummer because I pictured Shay in the top four from episode one. A major bummer to see her not being recognized for the things that she's doing. So let's move in to the runway category, which is Nitty Nitty Bang Bang, which is such a fun category name. Viv was in blue for the first time. It looked like a big bathrobe. I think the use of materials was interesting. I'm just glad it wasn't blue. Shay looked stunning. I think it was Nicole Byer in the first episode of The Pit Stop from this season, where she was just talking about how Shay does such a great job at showing how beautiful black is. And I absolutely love and adore that about her. And this outfit was exactly that. Evie looked absolutely incredible. Those pants were bonkers. It was 
very Evie Oddly. I think that she looked the most interesting on the runway. Jinx was giving us another old Hollywood glamour look and to turn knit into Hollywood glamour and have it look the way that it did, I thought it was really stunning. It was very beautiful, not super out of the box, but at this point, I'm not really expecting Jinx to come out and give us something crazy. Trinity looked absolutely fantastic. The leopard pop on that lavender was stunning. I think she probably looked one of the most beautiful on the runway for this category. Monet looked nice. I wish that the bottom was a little bit different. I didn't really like the booty shorts. I thought they were pulled up just a little bit and maybe they could have been pulled down or maybe lengthened just a little bit. She looked really good though. Jada was cute. Raja looked, oh, Raja, Raja, Raja. Raja looked so good. I thought it looked like a knitted version of her C3PO outfit from season three and the callback to that. And I think she even referenced it during her runway walk is that she was kind of doing C3PO. It was elevated. I think Raja was probably my favorite on the runway next to Evie. Okay, so let's get into the acting challenge which they showed next. In my personal opinion, the two best in the acting challenge were Trinity and Jinx. They did the most with their characters. They did the most with their acting choices. They did the most characterization. They did the most personification of that character. We got it right away. The facial expressions that Trinity was making, how empty headed it was, how perfectly Karen from Mean Girls it was, and Jinx with her vocal fry and the voice changes she was doing and her snaps into the crazy moments and being manic were so perfect. I thought that Raja and Monet were really solid I think that either one of them could have been top two in my opinion. I think Evie and Viv were fine. I think Evie was playing it a little bit too much. And I think Viv was a little bit too similar to Donald Trump, which looking at it production wise, it was very clear that they wanted Viv in that role and that it was supposed to be a reference to Donald Trump with the make Christmas great again. There were so many references to it it seemed very slighted for her and I would have liked to have seen a different type of acting choice. It seemed safe, in my opinion. And Jada and Shay were the weakest. I feel like Jada was really not present at all. She was kind of doing her own thing the whole time and I think right now she just feels very like, hey, I'm gonna be in the top four, so I don't really need to do that much. I already secured my spot. And I think Shay is kind of just over it. The problem is though, is that Shay got a really lackluster role. It wasn't her fault. That role was not built to be funny or a standout role. There was really nothing you could do with it. She was dealt crappy cards. It was very Scream Queens. As far as an acting challenge, I really liked the direction they took with it. I really liked all the pieces of it. I do wish the twist had been maybe just a little bit bigger. I'm expecting too much from a RuPaul's Drag Race acting challenge, but it would have been cool if maybe the killer was like Jinx or something. I don't know how they would have done that, but or a dual killer, make it, make it a little more Red Devil. There could have been a, a couple other things that could have done to that twist. It was a very solid challenge for these winners. So now let's talk about the top two. Um. <sighs> I want to say I'm okay with the fact that Raja was up there. My personal opinion is that Raja should have been on her fifth win by now. Raja should have won so many other challenges. I think that Raja did absolutely fantastic in the balls. Raja did fantastic in the Justice episode. Raja did great in the Snatch Game. This should be her fifth if she's going to be up here. Raja should have at least four stars by now. Do I think that she was the most solid in the challenge? No. Do I think her runway was the most standout? Yes. So I almost feel like the runway pushed her more into the top two. However, Viv's placement was really odd to me. They were really hyping up her performance and her runway. And for me, I love the Vivian. I just didn't see it. I thought that Monet or Trinity or Jinx were more solid and even in their runway approach. If we're looking at runway in particular, Trinity and Jinx in that order were stronger. So I think I would have been okay if it had been Raja and Trinity or Raja and Jinx, Monet and anybody. Like Monet was so good in the challenge. I don't know, it was what it was. And, and I don't know, I think of all the weeks that Raja's done really well, this wasn't the week to give her a star. That should have been in the balls. That should have been in Snatch Game. The lip sync was super freak. I have a theory that the, the lip syncs have been so odd this season and I haven't been able to figure out why up until now? If this is an all winter season, why wouldn't we pull out all the stops? You had Jesse J, why not do something like Domino, something super iconic that would have been a great number. We had 
oh my god, I'm at a farm. There are so many great numbers that are out there that haven't been done on Drag Race that these winners could have slayed, but they chose these very odd niche songs. So I was thinking, if the goal is to get Jinx into the top four spot, and if it's a lip sync for your life, for the crown, Jinx could not win in that type of category unless they were odd songs. So if you had a bunch of really powerful songs like Lemonade, Domino, and then at the end, it was like Old MacDonald Had a Farm and Malamo number five, it'd be like a little bit, huh, that's suspicious, that's weird. So honestly, I feel like right now they're trying to set up these odd songs so that when we get to that top four placement, we don't really raise an eyebrow when they're songs that are tailored for someone like Jinx. We'll see though, a lot of people are thinking Jinx is gonna win and it looks like they're painting it for Viv. So Raja won the lip sync, Jada is blocked next week, which honestly I think is a smart idea considering that Jada was sort of like waving around the target on her back in the workroom like, hey everybody, I got all these stars. I'm gonna be the winner of the whole show. <laughs> Don't look at me. Like she's not playing a very smart game. I mean, being cocky never gets you anywhere in party games like this. So I really don't know what her strategy is. What is going to be difficult going forward is some of the really powerful people going into this that I pinged as top four are either going to have to kill it every single week like Monet and Shay really have to get it into gear if they want to get that spot, but it's going to be hard. Next week is a dance challenge. I see Monet and Shay doing well. I see Viv doing well. I see Jada doing well. This may have been a really good block because if Jada pulls it out and she's in the top two, she doesn't get a star. So this could be a really good opportunity for some other players to get up there. And I'm really hoping that Shay can pull it together because I want her in that top four spot. I need her to be in that top four spot. And I'm very worried that Jinx is gonna do horrible again because I mean, unless she does something really kooky and lands on the top, I don't see Jinx doing well, even though I've pegged her as my other top four. So right now my top four is Jinx, Shay, Monet, Trinity. I would love for Raja to be up there, but I don't see it in the cards for her, considering how often she's been shafted all season. But we'll see what happens next week, and I will be here with another conversation. But let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below about this episode. See you soon.